Good afternoon, and welcome to Singularity University's Global Summit. My name is Will Wiseman. I am an executive director here, and it is my great pleasure to get to be your host for the next three days. So incredible things are happening in the world, right? I'm here, you're here because of that. You know, you can sense it, you can feel it. Some of these things are driven by technology, and some of these things are being driven by other forces as well. On the tech front, it's clear that the acceleration of information technology is at full force here. Some would say that this is one of the most important times, I think, in human history. And maybe because I think the stakes are never, have never been higher. Right? If you think about what is truly at stake here, this is an important time for us to be coming together, for us to be paying attention, and for us to be working hard. So as I look back over these last, uh, this last 12 months since we were here, I, I kind of took a little, I don't know, a little look at uh, some of the interesting things that I had thought had happened over the last year in terms of technology, technological breakthroughs, and I want to walk you through some of those. I mean, we've continued to see these ad incredible advances that are, that are taking place um, across so many different areas of, of tech. So robotics is really starting to come into its own. This is a, a really exciting and interesting new product uh, that's created by a company called Eco Robotics. It's designed to remove weeds. And so what's fascinating to me about this is, one, it, it looks like it's science fiction, right? To me, this feels like an early Star Wars uh, episode, so simple in many ways, but it's the convergence of a lot of different technologies coming together, right? It's AI, it's sensors, it's solar, it's cameras that are all working together to make this product possible. Or take a look at this interesting new firefighting drone that's out of Latvia. Uh, it's by a company called Aeron, so designed to be able to, to remotely uh, be controlled to address fires. You start to think about what this might mean in terms of as we're unleashing or, or coming across any sort of natural calamity or disaster, you have the opportunity now to unleash basically a whole swarm of robots that could go out there and fight these different issues in ways that have never been possible before and at a scale that's never been possible before. We're also seeing some really interesting devices that are coming up and uh, not always clear exactly what they're doing and what they're gonna be for. This is the Spot Mini, it's made by uh, Boston Dynamics. And so if you're looking at this video and you're feeling like, you know what, this is something that's gonna make my life better and I really gotta have one of these things, the good news is that uh, later on next year you're actually gonna be able to buy one of these. So this stuff is moving out of the lab and really into consumer products and into our world. Whether that's a good thing or not, I, I don't know, but pretty interesting to look at. And you can clearly see that the technology is advancing significantly. So this is one of the areas that's, uh, that's most exciting to me, to see what's happening on the energy front. So we're seeing that clean and renewable energy is clearly winning, right? It's on the path to become the dominant global energy source. We're seeing unsubsidized solar that is besting fossil fuel prices, and that's happening more and more in different parts of the world. Renewables are clearly gonna win, and I think that's an incredibly exciting thing for humanity and for the world as a whole, and you know, so we certainly know we need that. We're also seeing utility-scale battery storage and microenergy sources and new energy grids that are coming on. And so this notion of providing cheap and ubiquitous power to all is really becoming a reality. We've got an interesting SU company actually called Rafiki Power that won the Global Grand Challenges for Energy last year. They're based in Tanzania, and they basically have a solution that allows them to go into parts of the world that have no energy infrastructure and to all of a sudden put a little microgrid in place, right? And to be able to deliver not only energy, but all sorts of value-added services. And so if you think about, you know, after food and water and shelter, energy is a pretty important kind of basic need, right? To be able to plug in your devices, to be able to access the internet, to be able to read at night. So to be bringing energy now to so many parts of the world is really an exciting and major step forward. Uh, Ramez Nob is going to be talking significantly later on today about that. So medicine, also another area. We're seeing super exciting breakthroughs. Uh, lots of interesting stuff happening. On the 3D printing front, we're seeing 3D printed human corneas for the first time. Or check out this video. This is from uh, Dr. Daniel Kraft at our Exponential Medicine Conference. And this gives you a sense of how a physician might use augmented reality to be able to interact with patients. Now, this is stuff that's starting to make it into our world now. And I think one of the themes you're gonna hear over the next couple of days is, you know, science fiction really becoming part of our everyday. 
And science is also investing and in, uh, advancing in ways that allows us to understand the human body in ways that we've never, never been able to do before. And, you know, these breathtaking videos are from a 3D microscope that's able to take three-dimensional video in real time from a living organism. So you think about being able to, you know, peer inside the human body and see what's going on and understand what's going on. Uh, it's really incredible and it allows us to think about and address problems that previously were unsolvable. So 2018 was also very much a year about space. I don't know if, uh, how many of you have seen the launch here of the Falcon Heavy, but for me, this was a, a pretty special moment over the last year and, and kind of, to me, felt like it had hints of the Apollo launches from way back, uh, way back when, where you've got you know, pictures of people lined up on highways and you have people glued to their laptops and, and maybe a few TVs in this day and age, um, you know, watching what was going on. And SpaceX is, SpaceX is changing how we think about what it means to send things into space, right? How they've completely reimagined the frequency at which we're launching objects into space, the cost around that, the ability to reuse some of those products. Like, it's really extraordinary. And just like, how inspiring is it, right, to see these, see these images, to see the spaceman there and the roadster, to see them sticking the landing of these two rockets coming down. I mean, when I see that, like, to me, that looks like that's animation or that's, that's a computer-generated design in a, in a sci-fi movie, but like, that, that's our life. That's the life that we are living in right now, which is pretty exciting. So because of these changes around space, we're also seeing that launching satellites has really hit an inflection point. Right? The economics around getting objects into space has changed, and that means we're starting to see this huge prolifer proliferation around uh, cube satellites and micro satellites. And so you've got hundreds and soon thousands and soon to be tens of thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of objects that are going to be in low Earth orbit that are going to provide data that we've never had access to, right? to be able to see in real time what's happening with crops to be able to look at what's happening in terms of ships and ship traffic and to be able to detect when someone wanders into an area that they shouldn't be and is illegally fishing, right? To be able to look at uh, sea temperatures and understand what climate change is doing and to predict the resulting weather as a result. Really powerful, really exciting, and something I think that is gonna change our world as we start to have access to this information. So artificial intelligence has also been something that's been a huge part of uh, AI or this year. You may have you know, read about it. I think there's a lot of controversy, right? People don't know whether it's going to empower us or it's going to enslave us, right? Is it going to destroy our jobs? Is it going to take away meaningless tasks that we're no longer uh, excited about and need to focus on? We're going to spend a lot of time over the next couple of days kind of doing a deep dive into this and really uh, talking a lot about AI and talking about kind of the, the positives and the potential negatives as well. So clearly, there are amazing things happening in the world, right? And what's interesting to me to look at is not only just the acceleration of technology, but you know, what is that doing to the world? How is that affecting human beings across this planet? First of all, the power of the individual is growing, right? Individuals have never been able to affect more change than they can today. Like that, that is a hugely exciting thing and a theme you're going to hear repeatedly. You know, secondly, businesses are really being expected to, to fill the vacuum, the widening kind of leadership vacuum in society. You know, governments, sadly, are not stepping up, right? In fact, maybe in some countries, maybe this one, uh, our government is kind of leading us, uh, reverting a little bit and going in the wrong direction. So it's up to businesses to start to lead. I think one of the most significant things that happened in 2018 was Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock. And uh, you may have read about this. He, basically said that it was no longer enough to just make money, right? And he was looking for his companies and public companies to, to really pay attention to what they were doing to affect the, pop, the public good, right? What were you going to do to make the world a better place? For those of you who know SU, you know this is something we talk a lot about, right? Doing well by doing good. And to start to see this being woven into the foundational fabric of business, I think is really a huge, huge step. And I think it's going to be a game changer for us. Third, technology and technological change is clearly having negative consequences on society, right? Much of what we're going to discuss over the next few days is going to be positive. That's what SU is all about. Uh, but we're also going to have some real serious conversations about some of the negative elements as well. So one of our speakers, Nicole Bradford, who's going to be talking on Wednesday, has this great quote that there's no more noble use for technology than to bring peace to the mind of mankind. 
So I love that quote. I mean, it's a beautiful thing to, to aspire to. We're clearly not there yet, though, and I think in many ways we're failing. If you look at the suicide rates in the U.S., you know, this is a heartbreaking statistic. And um, since 1999, suicides have increased 25%. You know, never have people been more anguished and more alienated than they are now. Right, so clearly technology is not serving people well, or as well as it could. It's not bringing out the best in them and creating the best possible life for them. So for me though, the good news is, we're having this conversation, right? This is something that people are becoming increasingly aware of. It's something that we're talking about at SU. It's something that we're gonna be talking about at the Global Summit. So that is, that's exciting news. Um, you know, as I mentioned, this is a year that we're gonna get into some of the, the downsides of technology. You know, and really trying to think through what are some of the repercussions here as well. It's certainly technology is doing a lot of great things, but we have to pay attention to these uh, adverse potential uh, impacts as well. So it's important that uh, while we acknowledge that not everything is great, right, and this journey is very much a bumpy one, uh, that this is the best time in human history to be alive. If you look at Many of the major indicators, you look at education levels, the number of democracies, life expectancy, poverty levels, they're the best they've ever been. Like, we don't always know that because of what we're seeing on the news, but if you just look at the data, like, it's really an extraordinary time to be alive. I want to touch on the poverty front uh, for just a sec. So our friends at World Data Lab, uh, who have real-time world data, uh, basically did some analysis, and they're projecting that in October of this year, that for the very first time, more than half of the world's population is going to be middle class. Like, so it's not just moving people out of 99 cents or $1.99 a day, it's now taking them to a place where they can have a middle class lifestyle. Right? And we know that that is so critically important for having a stable, a happy, growing world. So that's some really great news, and, and I think, you know, believing, uh, as we do here, in the power of abundance and technology, that, that that trend will continue. So what gets me most about this, excited about this time in history is that if we're engaged, if we work smartly, and if we pull collectively in the same direction, that there is a potential here to create a really special and spectacular future. Uh, it could be a world that provides for everyone, right? A world that could move us beyond a search to satisfy our most basic needs and get us to a place where we're really focused on creating our most capable and empowered selves. And that's a pretty extraordinary thing to be able to be, to be, able to be talking about, right? How lucky are we that that is a problem, that's something that we get to think about, that's something that we get to focus on, it's something hopefully that we get to help create. So I'm very fortunate to be part of a, an institution in Singularity University that is focused really on how do we move humanity forward? How do we create an abundant world for everyone? And one of the exciting things about this summit in particular is we're celebrating our 10-year anniversary so, uh, at this event. So it's really, it's an exciting, exciting milestone. Thank you. So for those of you who are new to SU, I just wanted to make sure that you knew a little bit about us, which is we're a benefit corporation. Uh, our mission here is to educate, inspire, and empower leaders to apply exponential technologies to address humanity's grand challenges. Started 10 years ago by Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis. They had this insight, driven by Ray's book, that we were entering this period of unparalleled innovation and disruption and that most people didn't know that that was coming. And given the scope of the change that we were talking about, they felt it was so critically important that, that we start SU as a place to help bring that, uh, bring that awareness to the public. So Peter Diamandis is half of our founding equation. He is a daring entrepreneur and author. He frequently talks about the best way to help a billion people, or the best way, excuse me, to make a billion dollars is to help a billion people. And, you know, how lucky are we today that the more value we create for others, the more of it that can come back to us. So by moving an organization or moving the world in a more equitable direction, you make yourself or your organization thrive and scale even more. Like that's, a, that's a nice win-win, I'd say. Uh, Ray Kurzweil is the other half of our founding equation. He is a brilliant and accomplished inventor. He's an author. He's a director of engineering over at Google. And it was really Ray's insights around the exponential growth of information technology that was the impetus for starting things here. So Ray stresses that we must imbue technology with the best characteristics of humanity. 
You know, we want fire to cook our meals, not burn down our villages. We must make technology align with the best interests of humans. So this organization was started as a dream 10 years ago by these two gentlemen. And now we're a community of 170,000 people in over 127 countries with the newest members here in this room today. So welcome. And as I look out, it's pretty, pretty amazing to be able to see this, uh, this gathering here, new faces and old faces. So really excited to have you here. Uh, to help celebrate our 10-year anniversary, the theme this year is the power of 10. So you're going to hear us talking a lot about that. We've asked speakers to, to reference this in, uh, in their talks. We're going to be looking back briefly on kind of how we got here. We're going to spend a lot of time looking forward and where we think the world is going and thinking about 10x uh, thinking. We're going to zoom in and look at micro issues and zoom out and look at macro issues. Uh, and the goal here is by the end of this, you're going to leave with some really profound insights about where the world's going and hopefully some real excitement and enthusiasm for uh, what the role that you can play and, and kind of a desire to get out there and, and make some of this happen. So my team has spent the last nine months thinking about topics and speakers, you know, what are the key things that we really need to hit on here? We've been looking at creating workshops and, and really experiential activities that we think are gonna help make some of these technologies more tangible and also hopefully leave you with some real skills that you'll be able to take back to your work or to your business. We've also been thinking a lot about fun and joy, right? And how can we bring that to the Global Summit? Because uh, for those of you who have been here before, you know that this is a really special community and it's a community that likes to, to think hard, but they also like to play hard as well and uh, get into it a little bit. So that's, that's an important part and I hope you'll have a great time here. So the Global Summit is a special opportunity for all of us. You know, it's a chance to learn. It's a chance to be free, to let in new ideas and form new beliefs. And it's a chance to connect with the extraordinary people that are here in this room with you and are on this journey with you. So I hope it's an amazing few days for you. I want to thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I'm really looking forward to what I know is going to be a terrific global summit. So thank you. <laughs>